Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review as usual. Well, sometimes it could be like a commercial break or or any other random video that I would post. Maybe some announcements or or any other kind, but whatever. Maybe it could be like um, a shopping video or or going outside of town, which I don't I don't post them that much, but you know what it is. But I did went to Dollar Tree and 99 cent only store, you know, just to find some random titles that I don't have in my collection, you know, of DVDs and Blu-rays, because, you know, you never know what you're going to find, but I always love to go there, because I always like to find some good titles, and sometimes maybe some, some titles that I'm not really interested in, but I'll just take it anyway. Well, one of them that I picked up, and I couldn't believe I found this, a double feature buddy combo of Loose Cannons and Another You. Yes. A buddy cop comedy with Gene Hackman and Dan Aykroyd, and Another You with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder in their final performance. Yeah. Yeah, two bad comedies for the price of one. <laughs> okay. Well, for now, I'm going to be reviewing Loose Cannons, which is the most infamous buddy cop comedy, which one plays a, a tough but very sly cop who wears a Washington Redskins jacket. Yeah, he actually has his own uh, you know, classic car. It's a buggy. And he does come up with his own um, dialogue and one-liners and all that other stuff. You know, he's he's like a cool type of guy. And the other is a forensic uh, expert, which he's diagnosed with multiple personality disorder, meaning that he will actually uh, get them once he confronts with uh, the sense of violence that that he occurs. That's where he starts doing all these impressions of pop culture icons such as Looney Tunes, The Lone Ranger, uh, Dirty Harry, uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, uh, Star Trek, Popeye, Pee Wee Herman. I mean, you name it. I mean, this is what he does <laughs> in the movie. But together, they, they're about to team up to go after all these German bad guys who are actually the killers who killed uh, several of the victims who actually watched a mysterious film and this is not any ordinary film no and you wouldn't believe this it's a Nazi porno film that features Adolf Hitler Tch. how on earth did this movie got made got green-lighted and came up with such an idea this simple and clever. Well, leave it to the two Mattersons. Yeah, Richard uh, Christian Matterson and his father, Richard Matterson, joining in with Bob Clark, yeah, the co-writer and director behind uh, The Christmas Story, Black Christmas, From the Hip, and yep, he's been also known for coming up with all the Porky's films. Well, the first two films, but but he's been best known for them. And then he also did um, Baby Geniuses 1 and 2. That's a low point on his career. <laughs> or at this rate, he has a hit and miss of, of several movies that he does. I know. But what can you do? <laughs> Alright. Now, and I did put this on my worst list. It's at my number three of the worst films of 1990. Yeah, everyone agrees that it's by critics. It's destined to be one of the worst uh, comedies of the early 90s. Even though uh, the movie was actually made in the 80s. Uh, it They filmed this in 1988, but it didn't get a release until... February 1990 
Um, I think it's because Studio TriStar was going for schedule conflicts. They were going to release it sometime in, I think, in the fall of 1989, but they postponed it and it just by dumping it in February, where another film, uh, Mountains on the Moon, suddenly joins in, and that's sad. Because Mountains on the Moon was actually a better film than this. And this also has a sense of irony here, because believe it or not, there was an employee at a landfill facility in um, Katagari, uh, Alberta, Canada, where um, Katagari uh, police actually investigate um, a film reel that has the footage of what seems to be a different movie. Little did they know, it was actually the footage of Dan Aykroyd you know, investigating a murder from the film. But uh, yes, the, the film reel has already been you know, scratched up. It looks pretty bad. I mean, after all, it's been in the landfill for so long. Reportedly, though, because it was on TMNZ.com, yeah, that piece of shit show. <laughs> Uh, Dan Aykroyd actually responded because it's obviously he wasn't a big fan of the film. Well, I guess you can't blame him. The movie should have been left in the landfill where it belongs. That's his own words. I mean, maybe he's joking, but I don't know. I think he's maybe just got it right. But even for its bad comedies, I mean, I have to admit, um, I did like the chemistry between the two. At least, you know, they were worth the price of a mission. I mean, it has Dom DeLuise in the film, too. With Nancy Travis, Ronnie Cox, yeah, Dick Jones himself. <laughs> and it has some several action scenes here and there, but it's, it's more than what you're bargaining for, I guess. Well, anyway. Well, let's just start with this review of Loose Cannons. Uh, it stars Gene Hackman, Dan Aykroyd, Dom DeLuise... Ronnie Cox, Nancy Travis, Paul Coslow, Dick O'Neill, Robert Prosky, Jan Trishka, Leon Ripley, David Allen Greer, yes, David Allen Greer from In Living Color, in one of his earlier roles, Reggie Cathay, yes, from The Wire, no longer with us, Bill uh, Fagerbake, yeah, from the TV show uh, Coach, yeah, he also went on to do um, Spongebob Squarepants and Herb Armstrong. Yeah, it's written by Richard Christian Madison along with his father. Also, and it's co-written and directed by Bob Clark. The movie began set somewhere in the Washington, D.C. area at sea, where the opening actually has like a blazing shade of red. Yeah. And it's all foggy, too. Um, we meet, like, a, a crew of filmmakers, um, which joins in with uh, a pornographic uh, director, Harry the Hippo Gutterman. Yeah, that's that's his nickname, the Hippo. Played by Dom DeLuise. Who, for some reason, spotted those German uh, Nazis who... Who are the ones who are about to go after them? They just took out uh, a severe head of one of the um, the victims, and then suddenly it just turns into a boat chase, which the killers actually killed um, three of the victims, while uh, or several of them, while the hippo, along with um, the other member, had just uh, ran ran out and a lot of gunfire all these gunshots everywhere so they're the only survivors um, that's when we meet uh, we actually learned that um, the film was actually being found that features a young German officer named Kurt von Metz who's played by Robert Prosky who was actually sleeping with Adolf Hitler it's a, uh, a gay group uh, sex uh, Nazi porno film, which years later, um, Bon Metz is being running for 
West Germany Chandler and actually arranges to murder everyone for those who've seen the film. And that's what happened. So that's where we meet um, Metropolitan Police Officers uh, Max Stern. And he was a tough, sly officer played by uh, Gene Hackman who joins in with his new partner because he actually had some other partners uh, before including one that's played by David Allen Greer which uh, at the beginning of the movie he was called in for the job to um, find out what was happening inside a local apartment where they were beginning to hear a lot of crazy uh, noises uh, and because they were disturbing the peace so yeah he came in just finding out these these two couples and and he's talking about safe sex. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to form them so they can keep everything quiet. That sort of thing. Uh, but then next, um, he was called in on the job because, well, he just, we learned that his apartment was on fire. So he's got kicked out. Took all of his stuff with him inside his, uh, his buggy that he has. Um, that he really loves. Uh, he even brought in his cat to join in, yeah, because he even got all the all the cat products, you know, like like the cat litter and and some cat food and all that. Bring it in. Well, anyway, he was assigned in with a new partner, Elias Fielding, played by Dan Aykroyd, who's a forensic expert. You know, he's he's there for the job. Um, he just got out from a monastery, yeah, where he's actually doing a painting of of all of his personalities, as you can see, that's actually a very nice painting, which is the the Last Supper. Yeah, the Last Supper filled with all Dan Aykroyd's. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, he was sent in to investigate the crimes that just happened, took place, uh, where all the uh, the victims were killed. And he's a very good expert here, so he knows everything. Um, but of course, we did learn that he has multiple personality disorders, so it, it aggravates him whenever he's being confronted with violence and conflicted with him, uh, because according to the captain, who's played by Dick O'Neill, the main reason why he had that was because he was kidnapped and was tortured, joining in with his brothers by the Colombian drug lords. We also learned that the captain was actually his nephew. And um, that's another reason why he had a side effect where he starts to change all these uh, personalities of many pop culture icons. So, so no matter what happens, he's going to start doing all that. So he does all these invitations of a Popeye, Captain Kirk, Spock, and Scotty, or any other and it actually happened just when um, they just went to an S and M uh, club where the bouncer, known as the Giant, played by Bill Fackerbeck and and all the rest, uh, they were trying to find where um, Harry the Hippo Gutterman is at. And yes, that's where they found him. And meanwhile, that's where we got a bar fight scene, and you know, already uh, beating the shit up out of both of them, and. That's where, you know, he, he was about to tell, um, that's where uh, Stern was about to tell uh, Fielding to change uh, his personality. But he says, I'm sorry, I just can't handle the violence. And he says, no, you tell me. And then suddenly he changes. And that's where he starts doing all these impressions, you know, the, until they continue with the bar fight and then they escape. Then we get a car chase scene along the way where where all these German bad guys are about to go after Harry the Hippo Gutterman. So Max Stern and Elias Fielding just join in. But of course Elias had to take take over for the driving. <laughs> so now that's uh, where we get a chase scene, you know, the leader of all the German Nazis or actually shot a, a bazooka and misses and then he takes and then Elias just continues driving and 
you know, already just damaged and and just crashes uh, Stearns' car. Even lost all of his stuff too along the way, and you know, he's Elias is just going around, you know, doing all these impressions, saying, "Hey, bad guys!" Ah! You know, just teasing them, and then and then he's just going around saying. Welcome to the NASCAR of Reckless Driving. Uh, and then he said, Warp Speed. No, 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 not Warp Speed. And then they just crashes into a box uh, full of chickens. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, the the main reason why uh, they, they got Harry the Hippo uh, to join in was because uh, we learned that... Uh, that his partner uh, had took uh, the film and it's being hidden somewhere in New York City to be safe. They decided to take the train um, just so they can get to New York but first they, they must uh, join in with a team of FBI agents, one that's led by Bob Smiley played by Ronnie Cox who actually orders uh, them to prevent any uh, of the leaked footage of the Nazi uh, porno film that would lead to an embarrassment of Bon Metz because there's going to be like a political campaign that's going to happen. They don't want to fall into the wrong hands. Um, also, we have a a uh, Mossad agent uh, for the Embassy of Israel in Washington D.C. who was on their trail, named Rebecca Rivera Lowenguen, who's played by. Nancy Travis. So there's like a chase scene along the way, you know, with um, yeah Max Stern just driving a a police van um, along with uh, with Harry the Hippo and Elias Fielding. So they had a chase scene trying to get away from the FBI, the FBI agents and her. So they wound up inside the uh, the Union Station. So they're trying to catch the train but they actually took the wrong train they that takes you all the way to Cleveland so yes the FBI agents just missed the train but unfortunately uh, Rivera just uh, joined in on the same train you know just before the bad guys um, came along and about to go after him which that's where you see Elias um, changes himself into the Road Runner you know, from Looney Tunes, and uh, also uh, Birch Cassidy, yeah, from the movie, where he actually kicks uh, one guy in the nuts. You know that scene in, in Butch Cassidy's assignment this kid, where he's about to kick that that tall uh, that tall guy, where where he, he was like just about to have a knife fight between him and he's yeah he says there are rules against a knife fight rules in a knife fight no rules <laughs> kicks him right in the nuts and then beats the shit out of him afterwards okay i know i'm getting ahead another scene too which is also birch cassidy and the sundance kid they're about to jump out of the bridge and landing straight into the river just to get rid of, uh, just to go, just to get out of the all these helicopters who are about to chase them around, and all the other bad guys. So they had to uh, just camp out for just for a little while before they're ready to leave. So that way, you know, they don't end up following them. Yeah, this is where they have a moment where we're both uh, stern and. And the fielding were just, you know, just making a conversation about what's happening, and then, and then they just want to have a quick howl. Yeah, they were both howling together, and, um, and then Harry the Hippo was asleep. So then they finally made it uh, straight to New York. I mean, going to um, Harry's uh, mansion. Yeah, where he has like a bunch of, uh, you know, got a bunch of people over there. Even actually has uh, all these automatic weapons too, so in case he'd be safe when when those bad guys uh, come out. And once they came, I mean, yes, they had a a violent shootout too. <laughs> I mean, because yes, he yes, Stern even told Fielding that um, if you change, 
he could turn into Wambo. <laughs> yeah, because, yes, he did have that machine gun, too. So, that also led to another chase scene and going all the way straight to the uh, another train station where they begin to find out where the film is being headed. And, yeah, that's been locked straight into one of those lockers. And once he found it, um, yes, uh, that's where he starts to throw the uh, the film reel straight into where into the hands of Riva. So she got it. But um, already, um, but of course, uh, well, Gutterman just jumped off um, earlier and got shot in the ass. But he's been taken to um, the hospital. Um, uh, Elias uh, got shot in the leg, I believe, and was uh, kidnapped and trapped um, with those bad guys, which that's, he's even torturing them, just like how that happened a long time ago. But then, um, well, of course, there was a vendetta between uh, Stern and the bad guy, because uh, afterwards, um, that's when the Fielding came in, you know, doing his oppressions as usual. I mean, of course, at first you thought that, you know, he doesn't have a gun, but actually, he does. And shot him, the bad guy, and went straight into um, the glass window and just landed straight down into the food cart. Yeah, there you go. So now, um, all three of them were in the hospital. They're recovering, so hoping that they'll go for their next adventure or so. What? Either way. <laughs> See what happens next. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty strange movie. It really is, um, but it, it is bad. But it's not horrible, but it's just, just bad. <laughs> Uh, but I'll say this though, uh, I did thought um, Hackman and and Ackroyd definitely have some chemistry, some great, some good chemistry together. I mean, even for a buddy cop comedy, I think they could have done a whole lot better for for this material. It's nice to see Ronnie Cox and Nancy Travis in the film as opposed to other actors, but and even Dom DeLuise. I mean, he was only there just for the ride and. I mean, mostly because, you know, he's he's in danger from all these bad guys. And Robert Prosky just plays uh, the German officer, you know, which we only saw his scenes. and So, of course, he's going to get arrested after they finally found the, the evidence of the film. Uh, of course, I know. But that was towards the end of the film. Uh... But you could tell this movie was a mess. It really was. I mean, there's a lot of action scenes here and there, as I already mentioned. Um, some some funny moments here and there, some memorable ones, but but others uh, weren't um, that funny. I'll give you that. Luckily for Ackroyd, though, at least he had a better buddy cop comedy, which is Dragnet from 1987, yeah, which is based on the police drama series by Jack Webb. And he did a great impression of uh, Jack Webb as uh, Sergeant Joe Friday. You know, he's always teaming up with his partners. And he did a damn good job at that. And he joins in with Tom Hanks in the film, and, and they were both great together. To me, that's a way better buddy cop comedy than this film. But I'll definitely say this, at least it's better than the other buddy cop comedy film that Ackroyd also did, and that was where he teams up with Rosie O'Donnell, you know, who are both undercover cops to to track down the to track down someone like a dominatrix at a local SMM club. I mean, if and that that was actually based on a novel by Anne Rice. Yes, the same uh, 
offer who gave us um, interview with the vampire. Yes. I think I, I mean, if, if I had to go for the two evils here, I think I'd rather watch Loose Cannons over Exit the Eaton. Yeah. Yeah, and the Dominatrix was played by Dana Delaney, by the way. Yeah. Well, she was sexy, though, but the movie ain't. <laughs> it's not even worth watching Rosie O'Donnell in a Dominatrix suit. That's for sure. Okay. Um... But yeah, it's a screenplay. I mean, come on, man. I think they could have come up with a better idea. Like, maybe it could have been something else. Instead of just being a Nazi porno film with Adolf Hitler. I mean, I mean what were the Madisons and, and Clark thinking when they wrote this? I mean, that's what I wonder. But I guess with all these Porky's films that he did, I mean, it's no wonder why he can come up with such weird material. And that's what happens. But I guess what makes it more wacky was having to see uh, Ackroyd doing all these impressions um, of pop culture icons out there. So, But hey, you know, I mean, Ackroyd is a great professional uh, comedian, so no matter what he does, I mean, he, he can really do all of that. I mean, I, I mean, granted, this could have been the role that would have been done by Robin Williams and, or even the Jim Carrey for that matter. But, but hey, Ackroyd is always fun, so no matter what. But I love Ackroyd. You know, I, I always loved the actor ever since I watched uh, Saturday Night Live and or Ghostbusters for that matter. I mean, mostly Ghostbusters. And I have watched some of his other wacky comedies, you know, like Dr. Detroit and and even the, the Blues Brothers and Neighbors, which is an underrated comedy, uh, joining in with his best friend, uh, John Belushi, and that was his last film. Yeah, that. So, hey. I guess it's better than nothing, I guess. And Hackman's always been a legendary awesome actor. I mean, all the work that he's been going for. Like, I, I always love him in the movie uh, The French Connection, where he played Papa Doyle, the detective. It has one of the best chase, uh, car chase scenes in the movie uh, in Chicago. And, yes, uh, I mean, that's a better car chase scene that you ever saw in a movie. Um, I even love the sequel, uh, The French Connection 2. And, yeah, he also has a partner in the film uh, that's played by Roy Scheider, who went on to do uh, Jaws as uh, Chief Brody. And um, he also went on to win the Academy Award for his performance in Unforgiven. You know, he plays the villain in that film, and he's done a lot of uh, great work. He also played the villain of Lex Luthor in the Superman films, yeah, the ones with Christopher Reeve, and many others he's been doing. You know? That's why I love, um, I love Gene Hackman. And I also love the other film that he did uh, called Narrow Margin, which is a remake of the original film from the 50s, or 40s, I believe. Uh, Narrow Margin, which is a remake. It had Ann Archer. And it was directed by Peter Himes. And Hackman has a lot of great films on his filmography, you know, like Hoosiers, uh, The Birdcage, uh, Get Shorty, um, Extreme Measures, uh, as well as uh, The Chamber. What else? Uh, Bad 21, I believe he also did, yeah, even Uncommon Balor, uh, Under Fire, uh, even uh, uh, Enemy of the State uh, with Will Smith. I mean, he's done a lot of great work. He even had a weird theme song at the end credits, too, that was sung by none other than Katie Segal. Peg Bunny herself from the TV show Married with Children. 
She also went on to do uh, Futurama and Son of Anarchy yeah, with Ron Perlman, that TV series on FX. Now, she's a singer herself, by the way, but I'm kind of amazed that she actually joins in with uh, Dan Aykroyd actually performing the, the bursts of the song. Like he goes around doing like that. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I'm joining in with uh, his brother Peter. Yeah, so both Ackroyd and Peter came up with the lyrics and stuff. Wow, really weird. Of course, critics hated the film. It got a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm so surprised that it did. Well, <laughs> but I guess that's what you expect. Um, so, I guess in a way, the film did have its moments, but all wise, it's. It's just uh, a ginormously bizarre buddy cop comedy that that I've ever seen, and I'm amazed that it even exists. <laughs> but hey, I guess we we had to go for what we had to go for. <laughs> so that's Loose Cannons, and I give the movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.